Rougarou are mortals cursed with a form of lycanthropy, giving them an appearance similar to a werewolf. A Rougarou shares a trait with vampires, that is, they suck the blood of mortals. Furthermore, some believe only a witch can make a Rougarou, either by turning themselves into wolves or cursing others with lycanthropy. In this way, three horrific folk monsters are combined into one horrible beast. When in their monstrous Rougarou form, the cursed individual has terrific strength, razor-sharp claws, heightened senses, and tremendous speed. They can easily knock a door off its hinges, kill most other apex predators, and show no fear of firearms. That said, a Rougarou can be killed and wounds do transfer over to their human form. In many cases, the injuries witnessed to a Rougarou can be used to track down or identify an individual that has the curse. They have sharp canine teeth, large ears, and hair covering most of their body. Essentially, they have the appearance of a werewolf and a curse that is nearly identical, despite having religious connotations in the modern North American variations. Originally called Lugarous, which means werewolves in French, these beasts were blamed for various crimes in the 16th century of France. Stories of the Rougarou are common across Louisiana. The name has many variations. However, the common names used are the original French term Loup Garou, which translates roughly into man that changes into a wolf, or its variant North American version, which is Rougarou. Rougarous are cursed individuals that roam the nights in half-man, half-wolf form. During the day, the creature returns to a human form. The cursed human often refrains from telling others of their situation for fear of being killed, and may act sickly to avoid suspicion or close contact with others. A common blood-sucking legend says that the Rougarou is under the spell for 101 days. After that time, the curse is transferred from person to person when the Rougarou draws another human's blood. The legend was spread in North America by early French settlers and French-Canadian immigrants centuries ago. In the Cajun legends, the creature is said to prowl the swamps, sugarcane fields, and woodlands around Acadiana in Greater New Orleans. The Rougarou has been used to inspire fear and obedience in the past, stories told by elders to persuade Cajun children to behave. According to one variation, the wolf-like beast will hunt down and kill Catholics who don't follow the rules of Lent. This Cajun variation of the Rougarou myth coincides with the French Catholic Loup Garou stories, according to which the method for turning into a werewolf is to break Lent seven years in a row. There are even more obscure variations of the Rougarou myth. In one case, the Rougarou is a rabbit. Back in the thick, fog-covered swamplands is where you're likely to encounter the Rougarou. Full moons over Louisiana swampland are said to bring out even the most elusive of cursed Rougarous. Murky, foreboding bogs, swamps, and wetlands are favorite haunts that can be quickly navigated by these fast predators. Thick underbrush, foggy bayous, and towering, ominous cypress trees become prime hunting grounds for the Rougarou. Croaking frogs, buzzing mosquitoes, and the sounds of the swamp have been known to become silent when a Rougarou is stalking a victim. Being powerful, supernatural, cursed creatures, they of course have no known predators and represent the apex hunter within their domain. There is almost no serious research into what amounts to a cultural myth that connects to religious superstitions. However, the Rougarou is indeed discussed in historical and cultural circles as part of Cajun lore. Europe has a long history of werewolf and wildman legends, some of which have led to criminal investigations. 
crimes have been committed and blamed on those afflicted with the curse of the Rougarou. Rather than forensic and empirical scientific studies, this cryptid is researched from a purely cultural or theological history perspective. Despite what many dismiss as a legend or a myth, there are numerous sightings of these cursed wolfmen roaming the swamps and the bayous of Louisiana. The isolated swamps of South Louisiana are the native territories of the Homa Indians. Long ago, they formed a kinship with this watery world. At the same time, they know the swamp is a place where evil lurks. The swamp is spooky because of the atmosphere. You feel like something is watching you all the time. If you out walk in the swamp and you hear no creatures, no animals, then there's something else there walking it. Elizabeth Courteau is a Homa Indian, born and raised in the Bayou in Terrebonne Parish, Louisiana. Her father was a tribal chief and the man that set a solid anchor for the family as Elizabeth was growing up. When he told you something, it wasn't made up, it was true. My father would hunt and trap or fish only in the daytime, not at night. He would tell his children never go at night into the swamp because it's a good place for the monsters to hide. And there's one monster he was especially concerned about, the Lugaroo. When Elizabeth was a young teen, she first heard the story of her father's terrifying encounter with this bayou devil. There's something that I remember. As a little girl, I will never forget as long as I live. And he runs out the door. Dad! Why are you making this story up? And I still get nightmares of it. I'm not making this story up. There's no way. You know what happened? The devil came to see you. The devil himself. It all began one stormy Saturday night. I'm a kiss. Bye, the adults were attending a tribal dance. So Elizabeth's father was left in charge to look after his young siblings. And they had told him, don't let nobody in. It's like they knew, they knew that something, that someone was out there. He had fed the children, told them the stories. He put them to bed. Go to sleep, okay? Okay. And he went to sit at the table to drink coffee. He was 15, so he was old enough to drink coffee. He heard a knock at the door. It started as a normal knocking. Then it got louder. My father said, Who's that? Who is it? Then answer. It knocked harder still. father says, you can't come in. And then he heard the voice, a very raspy, growling voice, to let him in. And he says, no, go away. I am not going to let you in. So when he said that, it broke the latch and opened it. My father was very terrified, but he was more afraid for the children than himself. He confronted it, and it jumped on the table on all fours. He thought that the creature was going to cut him, kill him, but it wasn't the case. He wanted my father to cut him and to deliver him from the curse, to set him free. No, no! The creature was very strong, stronger than any man. Lugaru is a creature that is actually half human and half God knows what other kind of animal. Most people would say it's, it's half wolf or it's half dog, but no one really knows exactly what the other half is. 
could be half demon. It's not everyone that can be a Rugaru or want to be a Rugaru. I believe there's somewhat of a curse, you know, doing things that you normally wouldn't do. One of the ways is a curse. So if someone puts a curse on you, then that transforms you into a Rugaru. And according to the legend, the only way out of the curse is blood. Someone who is a Rugaru and they go to attack a person and then that person cuts them and draw blood from the Rugaru. At that moment, the Rugaru turns back into his human form. One of the strangest things about the Luguru, it might be the neighbor next door. The Rugaru can be anyone. You know, a member of your family, your aunt, your uncle. It was a realization that Elizabeth's father would come to find after his horrific night with the Luguru. The next day, he was walking down the road. He met up with his cousin, and he noticed the cousin had a bandit on his arm. And when he saw that, he knew exactly who it was, and he avoided him. Did not want to talk to him, did not want to bother with him. When he saw his cousin the next day with that same type of wound, he realized that that was uh, an instance where he was encountered by the Lugaru. What can be said in summary is that the fear of the Rugaru curse has had an impact on more superstitious individuals. It has impacted the religious beliefs in Cajun country and may even have crossed over into the lives of non-religious, superstitious outdoor enthusiasts across Louisiana. The Rougarou may not have as much impact as more mainstream cryptids, but its regional impact, at least from a cultural perspective in Louisiana, cannot be denied.